What's up everybody? Uh, something exciting today. I picked up an iPod. An iPod Classic. This is the 5th gen. We're going to do something cool. I ordered all the parts to rebuild this. So we are going to completely rebuild and restore this. I haven't even plugged it in to test it because it has a nice pillow inside or it had a nice pillow inside. I already opened it up just because I wanted to get the spicy pillow out. We got that out of the way, but I'm just going to show you my process. I'm going to tear it down and we're going to rebuild it. I have all the parts here already ordered. Uh, we've got a replacement screen, a larger battery. I've also got a new shell that I got in a really cool color. And then I got an eye flash kit so that I can get rid of the spinny disc hard drive. We're going to get rid of that and we're gonna have an eye flash which is gonna have sd cards in it just gonna use a couple that i have <clears throat> but yeah let's get this started let's get this taken apart get it all cleaned up and put her back together in the new case so yeah let's uh get rid of this spicy pillow here and uh, uh danger <laughs> all right so i am not used to working on things on camera so i apologize in advance if uh I end up moving it out of the shot, but I will do my best to try to keep it in frame for you. But let's open her up. Like I said, I already popped it open to get rid of the spicy pillow. Disconnected the ribbon cable that goes up to the headphone jack and the switch. Uh, those we will be keeping. And then we have the hard drive, and this is an actual spinning disc hard drive. Really cool, tiny thing. They used these in a lot of the media players of the day. Um, like I said, we're getting rid of this. Get rid of that with the spicy pillow. And then we have the logic board and the screen. And then it's got the frame. And we just need to take the frame apart. So let's get that going. gonna throw out this old stuff any parts left over after this build I'm just gonna list on my eBay store James does stuff because there might be someone out there that wants the original parts even though I do not I went with red, just because red is my favorite color. Every tutorial online that I read said, if you're gonna be using it for personal use, get the iFlash, it's the best one. Apparently it's the easiest plug and play one there is out there. Other cheaper options, I guess, can have some various issues that you might have to tinker with a little bit more. was reading that the replacement screen is a higher resolution. I don't know if it is. I didn't trust it to see, so I hope it is, because where are you going with it? The battery I got, because I want it to be as long lasting as possible, I got the biggest battery that they offered. Hopefully it fits with everything that I'm going to put in there. It is a 3800 milliamp hour. I can break off the top of this. I might need to break that off and just have the teeny part on the bottom. Let me get the SD cards put in here and then we'll keep putting it back together. Got the SD cards done. Um, I decided to go ahead and break the uh, break this off thing just to make sure I have more room in there. So. Set that aside. There was one other cool thing that I didn't mention yet that I am doing to this. And I haven't seen a lot of modders do this. I've only seen like a Reddit post, but I wanted to be able to use the iPod with MagSafe devices. And so I got this magnet ring. 
I actually just pulled this off of a used case, an old case that was lying around, and it surprisingly works really well. So what I'm gonna do, this is the old shell um, with the new shell, is I'm gonna install this inside like that, and as you can see, I have this thing. It works really good. Like, I am blown away by how strong the magnets are on this from that cheap phone case. So it's it's pretty thin. Hopefully it doesn't interfere with the battery. That's the biggest worry I have is that the battery might not fit, but I think it'll fit. Yeah, we're gonna install this ring into the new case shell. That way I have MagSafe capabilities. I can use the iPod with MagSafe accessories. this earlier but I picked it up for ten dollars at a thrift store which is a really screaming deal especially because of the condition that it's in I probably could have got 80 bucks for it they're pretty popular right now in the retro community a lot of people are doing exactly what I'm doing That's the puffy one. Look at that. <laughs> How about that, everyone? She turns on. I think I will plug it into the computer before I put it back together just to make sure it does actually restore. Hang tight, we're gonna do that real quick. I'm back. So I plugged her into the computer, I ran the sink, and everything worked fine. Shows 256 for the drive space. I was able to load music on it. I was able to play. We are good to get her put together. peel this is for all you peel aficionados here let's bring it closer for you oh yeah oh yeah mm, yeah peel
we ready for the big reveal? Here we go. Fully restored iPod 5th gen thin. Peel aficionados, let's see the peel. Big reveal. Oh, it's pretty. process of rebuilding an iPod, 5th gen. I actually never had the iPod growing up. I had the, um, I had the Zune, believe it or not. So I was a Zune boy, a Zune fanboy. Zune, Zune, Zune. My very first MP3 player back in the day was the Creative Zen. So this was the very first one that I had. These were made in the heyday of the MP3 player. Really cool because you could replace the battery and it has the 30 gig hard drive in it. It's actually a, a 3, 3.5, it's the laptop size hard drive. It was twice as big as this one, but the same amount of storage. This was my first one ever. Then when the iPod came out, I was too poor to afford it. Um, then I got a job and I bought the Zune because I thought, yeah, everybody's got an Apple. I want it to be different. I got the Zune. The Zune 30 is the one I started with, which was an exquisite device. I loved my Zune 30. It gave me no problems whatsoever. It ran great until the day that I upgraded to the new Zune 120, which was an absolute pile of garbage. It died in like a year. The hard drive just quit on it and I couldn't find a replacement hard drive. They were actually half the size of this one, which was wild, but I couldn't fix it. And it was out of warranty. So Microsoft told me to kick rocks. And so I never went back, I guess. <laughs> uh, after that is when smartphones really started to become a thing. And so I obviously started using my smartphone for music after that point. I always wanted an iPod. I might keep it. I might sell it in a fully restored and modded like this. They go for a few hundred dollars uh, just because the desire for them has been going up a lot in the recent years. People are really sick of having a million subscriptions for a million stupid things and they'd much rather have their entire library on here because they can buy the CD, put it in iTunes, and load it up on this, and not have to listen to a million stupid ads. Hope that was an interesting video for you guys. Thanks for watching. If you like content like this, follow along. Give me a like, leave a comment. Tell me what you would have done different for this build. If you would have gone with a different color, if you'd have gone with different mods. I know there's endless mods for these. Um, there's even a Bluetooth mod for these. I didn't want the Bluetooth mod. There's also a USB-C mod. But that requires some crazy soldering, and my skills at soldering are not that great, so I wasn't going to mess with that. 30-pin connector is just fine for me. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Uh, follow along, like I said, if you want. Subscribe if you like this kind of content, and uh, we'll see you on our next adventure.